بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الاحباب شيخ محمد بن عبد الوهاب الوصابي حفظه الله تعالى منشن ان هيز تريتيز ادفايس فور ذا ستودنت اوف نوليدج اند ذس ويل بي ذا لاست ليسن ان ذا تريتيز هي منشن avoiding taqlid or blind following so one of the things after seeking knowledge going to on a journey to seek knowledge to sit with ahla ilm he mentioned avoiding taqlid or blind following allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and follow not that which you have no knowledge about ahabbatu fillah imam muhammad بن صالح العثيمين ورحمة الله عليه ورحمة واسع. He mentioned about تقليد as far as a شريعة term اتباع من ليس قوله حجة. He said that تقليد is to follow one or something which is not a حجة, which is not دليل, which is not evidence. Meaning, for example, if you say that you follow Sheikh so and so, or I say that I follow my Sheikh, I love my Sheikh, and I follow him in everything, in every view that he holds, and that that is how I understand my religion completely, then this would be taqlid. If I followed him blindly without having evidence. for his statements and understanding it but I just take it because it's from him and he in and of himself is not a hujjah is not dalil so we don't even say Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi rahmatan wasi'a he's Sheikh al-Islam but he is not dalil from the sh- sharia dalil from the shara ahabita fillah is very important for us to know it's ala arba maratib It has four levels or four uh, four things are considered evidence in the Sharia. The first thing is Kitabillah. The second thing is the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The third thing, which is con- considered as Dalil or a Hajjah or evidence in the Sharia after the Quran and after the Sunnah, is Ijma. Ijma of the Salaf, Ijma of the Sahaba, Ijma of the Ulama during a particular time. Meaning if the Ulama have consensus, for example, in this day and age, if the Ulama have consensus on a particular issue, that means they are all uh, you know, in agreement. then it's not permissible to go against that Ijma. It is not Uh, permissible to go against that consensus and this is the case with all throughout time uh, in in Islamic history that whenever the ulama and you'll find that in many of the books like Imam Nawawi's uh, Majmu' and Bidayat uh, al-Mujtahid by Imam Rushd and many many ulama from the past Imam uh, Ibn Abdul Bar in his book Tamheed and so forth where they they mentioned many masail and issues which were ijma meaning that, that the scholars of that time period had consensus about that that particular issue there was no disagreement so when you have the umma and the the ulama of the umma united upon something then it's not permissible this is considered sharia evidence so it's not permissible to go against that likewise And and this is relevant. I'll give an example. For example, tahrim uh, homosexuality, the impermissible impermissibility of homosexuality. Whereas you have some people now, some of them perhaps misguided Muslims, and some of them are not even Muslim. They are they claim to be Muslim or they understand themselves to be Muslim, but they have made what is unlawful to be lawful. So they go against the whole history of Islam, the whole history of the ulama of Islam and what the Muslims have basically had consensus on. That homosexuality is impermissible in Islam. 
So therefore, the one who says, no, it's permissible, it only means sodomy in the, in the verses, or it means this, they're making a very strange ta'wil that no one before them made as ta'wil. This is not how uh, the, what the, the ayats in the Qur'an lead us uh, our evidence for. This is not what the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, which is very clear, and what the ulama, how they understood the Qur'an and the sunnah and the mufassirin, the scholars of tafsir. They did not understand homosexuality as sodomy, but they understood it as the, the crime of it is being, uh, doing, having those relations between two men, especially two men and two women. And akramakum Allah. So therefore, when someone goes against that ijma, this is impermissible. It is, uh, you know, and and not, not even uh, something to be considered because that's a form of evidence. And along with that, the last level of dalil and, and the scholars somewhat um, have differences over this is qiyas, is making analogy. And so, this is not the time or place to talk in depth about these all these issues, but basically to make a qiyas would be in the situation of where you have a clear ruling in the sharia, maybe about pork, for example, the impermissibility of pork. And that from that, something that is not mentioned in the sharia, that the scholars, a mujtahid, will look at the impermissibility of pork and look at the reason for the impermissibility of pork and the hikmah behind it and apply that to something else which has is in agreement with that same reason for being impermissible. So hopefully that is clear and that's a little bit off our topic but it's important for us to have some idea about evidence. And this brings us back to the point of taqlid. So taqlid is following one whose statement is not a hujja, is not dalil in and of itself, to blindly follow them. And Ibn Uthaymin, rahmatullahi he mentioned that taqlid is in two uh, cases here. And he mentioned, the first he said, أَنْ يُكُونْ مُقَلِّدْ عَمِّيًّا لَا يَسْلَطِي مَعْرُفَةُ الْحُكُمْ بِنَفْسِهِ فَفَرَدَهُ أَتَقْلِيد So, and then he gave his evidence لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى فَاسْأَلَ أَهْلِ ذِكْرِينْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So he said the first type of taqlid is the taqlid or the, blind, the following, the blind following of the general Muslim, the, from the, uh, someone from the general Muslims who does not have the ability to deduce uh, the Sharia rulings and the ahkam of the Sharia. So then it's an obligation upon him to make taqlid in those cases. And this is in accordance with the dalil in the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْأَوْلَ أَهْلِ ذِكْرٍ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Then ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. So this fits under that ayat there. The second type of taqlid, أَحَبْتِ فِي اللَّهِ that the shaykh mentions, the second type of taqlid, أَحَبْتِ فِي اللَّهِ Ibn Uthaymeen mentions, أَنْ يَقَعَ لِلْمُجْتَاهِدْ حَادِثَ تَقْتَدِيَ الْفَوْرِيَ وَلَا يَتَمَكِّنْ مِنَ النَّظْرِ فِيهَا فَيَجُوزْ لَهُ تَقْلِيدْ هِنَا إِذِنْ So the second type, and this is in general, second type of uh, taqlid is when you have an, an, an alam, a great scholar of ijtihad that has reached the level where they can make Ijtihad, they know the Quran, they know the Sunnah of the Prophet and they meet the conditions of Ijtihad. And some new issue comes to them that they need an answer quickly and they don't have time and the and are unable to necessarily really look into the issue and do research into it. 
So in then in this case, the Sheikh mentions that it's permissible to make taqlid of another alim in this, this particular issue. And we mentioned this briefly yesterday. There's many other things we could say about taqlid, but I think that that is sufficient for our study here. The next point that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al-Wasabi, Hafidullah Ta'ala mentioned, he said, avoiding controversial argumentation. And this is from the Madhab of the Salaf. He said it was collected in a Tirmidhi in his Jami'i on Abu Umama al-Bahili radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the people did not become misguided from the guidance they were upon except after they were given to debate, meaning religious controversy. Then he read, they do not set it forth to you save by way of disputa uh, disputation. Nay, they are a contentious people. And then the Shaykh said, and do not be obstinate regarding your opinion during differences in understanding, nor in differences in degree of interpretation, so that people become blind followers of you, whether you are aware of it or not. This is absolutely imperative for the Da'i, for the person calling to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, not to, to always take a harsh and stern position. Be open if there is uh, room for interpretation. If it's an issue, meaning an issue in fiqh, some masail or some new issue, or whatever the case may be, and there's more than one opinion from the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, and it's an issue where it's permissible to have, uh, you know, that, or the differences are, are ikhtilaf, uh, Tanoa, Laysa Ikhtalaf Tabad, where the differences are uh, in in you know a permissible in, in in variation, in degrees, not in complete opposition to one another, or where there's no delil. In this case, then it's not permissible to make a harsh take such a harsh and stern view of a particular issue and those people who differ with you, you can call them mubtadi'a, you call them hizbis, you call them this, you call them that. No, that's not, permi that's not permissible. That is not permissible. So in that sense, then the person who begins to do this and begins to begin to make ta'asab to themselves and call to themselves and call to their view and call to only their sheikh's view as if it's the only view, if it's an issue where there's more room for interpretation from the ulama of Ahl sunnah you know, and it's ma'tabr, you know, it's backed up by sound evidence, then it's not permissible to make this ta'asab. And in fact, the people who do this can then thus themselves fall into the bid'ah of hizbiya and ta'asab and, and blind and, and making taqlid and making the people, uh, you know, follow their view or their sheikh's view and so forth. So it's very important that we remain humble with ilm. The more you gain knowledge, the more humble you will get. So you'll find this or the more humble you should become, I should say. And you'll see that it's a humbling path because there are many things you have said in your mind and you think that it's, it's halal or it's haram or it's this or it's that. But then you find out an uh, ulama from Ahlul Sunnah hold a different view or the evidence in the Sharia shows something different or whatever the, or the, whatever the case may be. But it shows us that we should not always be so firm and quick to dispute with others and call to our view. The last thing the Shaykh mentioned, firmness regarding fatwa. He said, Allah the glorified and almighty said, and for what your tongues describe, do not utter the lie, saying this is lawful and this is unlawful, in order to forge a lie against Allah. Surely those who forge the lie against Allah shall not prosper. This is what I advise, and it is not sufficient to hurry in advising the student of knowledge. Therefore I advise him to return to al-jami al-bayan, Al-Ilm wa Fadlihi by Ibn Abdul Barr and the book Al-Ilm by Abu Khuthayma Zuhair ibn Harb and Al-Ilm from, uh, from Sahih al-Bukhari also Sahih Muslim and the other books which have been compiled in Islam and then he says may Allah grant success to all in attaining that which he is pleased with and loves so Ahabatifillah this is very important advice that the Sheikh took time in, the, in that short talk that he gave, that he had given uh, regarding these important aspects and advice 
for seeking knowledge. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless the Shaykh and bless Ahli Yemen and the ulama of Ahli Yemen and the ulama of Ahli Sunnah, wherever they may be, and the Muslims everywhere with guidance and forgiveness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat, and bless us all to practice what we preach and bless us all to be gaining beneficial knowledge. Bless us with ilm al-nafi, rizqan tayyibu, amil al-muttaqabbilin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.